Hey, this is Kurt with Music Medic at the Sax Pro Shop. I thought today I'd show you a quick how we sandblast a saxophone at the Pro Shop. We've masked off the receiver. Anything that has masking on it's going to be smooth after the blasting happens. We've masked off the receiver. Careful that no sand gets down into the, into the inside of the tenon. We've masked off the strap ring, the thumb rest, the body to bow band, the guard at the bottom of the bow, the bell to bow band, We've masked off all the engraving. We have the, we have the inside of the tone holes here masked off so that the sand blasting doesn't get in and, and uh, blast the inside of the bell. And we've masked off the bell so the sand doesn't get in here. And around the end, because this is a busher, big B, so it has this rim here. So when this horn's done, it'll, get, it'll be satin silver with smooth silver highlights all the places where it's masked off and the keys will be all smooth silver. All right, I'm gonna give this horn to Matt and he is going to blast it. To do this, we use two different types of media. That's our proprietary mix and that way we get, we get a finish that looks more like the vintage sandblasted finish, if not exactly like the vintage sandblasted finish that these horns came with originally. Here we have the horn inside the blaster. This is a big boy blaster. And we have the first of the two medias that we're gonna spray. I'm gonna turn this dust catcher on and it's gonna get noisy. The great thing about the way we've, we've been uh, doing our refinishing is that we're able to incorporate it with our overhaul process. So, so by refinishing it now, when, the, when this instrument's done, all the keys will be fit perfect. The, the tone holes will all be level. Right now the tone holes haven't been leveled. They'll be done after this blasting. And the horn will be completely ready to assemble when it gets sent off to the plater. When it comes back from the plater, Everything will be done and it will only have to get assembled. This is a job that I don't believe that we could have done anywhere else. And believe me, we've looked. Uh, okay. I'll get, um, I'm gonna give this horn back to Matt and let him blast it with the, with the finer of the two media. Then we'll level the tone holes. We'll take this masking off when the tone holes are level and it's ready to ship to the plater and we'll give you a, let you see what it looks like just before we send it off to the plater. All right, I'm gonna go. All right, I'm at the tone hole bench and the tone holes on this tenor have been leveled. 
And we're just about to send this off to the plater, but before we do, we get to take the tape off the masking and see how it looks. So let's take a look and see how we did. Oh, this is going to look great. So the great thing about the horns that we're refinishing in the pro shop, as we talked about, are, is that on this horn, all the keys have been fit already and we integrated the refinishing in with the repair, which is something that is unique to the Saks Pro Shop. So just like we did the tone holes at the end, before we send it off to the plater, all the keys will be put back on, all the post faces will be checked. Everything will be checked that it's right before it gets sent off to the plater. We have a unique process to keep the plating only where we want it, and not where we don't, like inside the hinge tubes on the neck tenon, in the neck receiver. So when we get this horn back from the plater, it's going to be much better than it was new. We do very little buffing. That's mostly why we do the sandblasting. Everything will fit perfect. And this horn will play great for a real long time. Okay, we got all the masking off this horn and the neck, and it's gonna be great. Take a look at that engraving. I love this look where we mask off just around the engraving and leave the rest satin. There was a lot of discussion about how we would do this big B, and also whether this part in here should be satin, and we decided to leave it smooth, at least until we took the masking off and see how it looks. I think it looks nice smooth. The option would be to put satin in this area here. But there's a lot of things that we can do on a horn with the, with the finish that way and what parts that we leave smooth. We chose to make the guards satin on this one. Sometimes we leave them smooth. And it would even be possible to make this middle part of the bell to bow uh, connection here satin. But we chose to make it all smooth and it, I think it looks just great. This is smooth thumb rest, shiny strap ring, and the receiver, and that little post is set. This horn will get sent off to the plater today, and it should be back in a couple weeks, and we'll assemble it. I have a horn here that we got back from the plater recently, another busher, so maybe I can show you that one, and you can see what it looks like when they come back from the plater. This is a big B tenor, and that one is an Aristocrat Alto. So this is a horn that we, we did a couple weeks back. And this one is already sold. Most of the horns that we plate get sold before we get them back from the plater. And this horn is as tight as can be. All the key work is tight. The body is straight. All the posts are in line. And despite the refinishing, it's much tighter uh, than it ever was new. The tone holes were leveled after the, after the satin was put on. We did gold in the bell. And this is how we'll do that tenor that I just showed you. The smooth bell to body brace, the smooth thumb rest, smooth strap ring, the receiver with the satin post here, and the smooth engraving with satin on the inside. This horn has root pads and it's original snaps. This horn is gonna live in South Carolina. Another great thing about refinishing a horn here at the Pro Shop is it gives us a chance to do our modifications so they look original. Here you can see that we added some side key contacts. We changed out, we changed out the octave square here for a round piece. 
Uh, what other modifications on this? We have, we did, we, we, we soldered some parts on the back here so that, so that these rollers are smooth against the G-sharp tab. We replaced the strap ring on this horn. We also, this horn's unique in that we replaced, we replaced these two guards. And if you know busher guards, you know that they normally come in and they connect to the tone holes. So this piece here would come and connect to the tone hole, but when the guard gets hit, the tone hole gets damaged. On this horn, we built a new guard that connects to the body. So when the horn gets hit, if it gets hit, this area will get damaged and the tone hole may survive. We did the same thing here. This guard would normally come in and mount to the tone hole on either side, but we built this guard. You'd have to know bushers to even recognize this, but we built this guard and we soldered it to the body, so if this gets hit, the tone hole is more likely to survive.